different perspectives, same passion. Welcome to the Coach and the Couch Potato Podcast. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 21 of the Coach and the Couch Potato. As always, I'm Jeremy the Couch Potato. Opposite side of the screen, we got Coach Slate. Episode 21. The obvious one is the Nate Sally episode. Yeah. But I'm going to tug at your heartstrings today, Slate. Okay. Episode 21, the Devlin McDaniel episode oh, of the Coach and the Couch Potato. My guy, Dev. Shout out to Dev, man. Oh, dude, that was, that's a good one. That's a, that's a I, good uh, one. I had Nate Sally in my head all weekend, and then it hit me this morning. <laughs> it's like, yo, Devlin wore 21, didn't he? So I confirmed it this morning. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, what's going on, man? Not much, man. Um, had my niece and nephew in town this weekend, <laughs> so it was crazy. Um, we, uh, you, you, you and Jaden would be excited to know that the Slater family went bowling yesterday and I tried to take it serious. <laughs> and my, my dad, my dad was a big time bowler when I was growing right. up, you know, he's worked at a factory, got carpal tunnel and things like that. Like it's hard for him to grip the ball like he would want to, but I shot a 124, two games in a row. And I was like extremely proud of myself i was so proud of myself like oh my gosh so so yeah man that's uh that was been the weekend it's been good and now we're just chilling man how about you good week low-key week uh nothing nothing too fancy uh you know Jaden did some bowling today right when he got back home this uh from work this weekend um you know watched some french open kind of He's got me watching that now. So, and then we okay. had pickleball on TV today too. So, okay. um, neither one I would ever be able to do. I would get <laughs> decapitated. Um, but doesn't mean I can't watch them, respect them. Um, yeah. Crazy talent. Crazy, yeah. crazy talent. So, yeah, good week. Um, good, man. Yeah. You know, we hit on this last weekend. You know, as we talked about, you know, we're going to start, you know, kind of going OSU to start. Um, we talked about how big this recruiting weekend was. And, yeah. you know, a- as we record this, it is 541 on Sunday. And the news is already coming out hot and heavy. Um, <laughs> you know, to, I'm, I'm going to actually double check real quick, make sure nothing else has came out. Oh, there we go. Th- th- there's another um, another positive spin. So let me, let me jot that one down. Okay. Um, so that we can talk about. Um, you know, last week we talked about how doom and gloom everything was sounding on the Ohio state front for recruiting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's wild how you get one weekend of visits and the entire narrative starts to spin, Uh, you know, right off the rip, we started hearing, um, positive vibes on Vernell Brown and Riley Pettijohn, like, early yesterday yeah um you know as of last week i would have told you that you know vernell brown absolutely um that we uh we were probably going to get him Um, yeah so there's a lot of positive there but riley pettajohn felt like he was going to go to texas um yeah and that's why you saw um osg really start to pursue jok's little brother yep um but now it sounds like OSU is in a really good spot with both of these guys out of the weekend. Yeah. Um, you know, we talked about Justin Hill and how you know you cannot miss on him. Cannot uh, miss. About 25 minutes ago, uh, BK, Bill Curley, came out and said it would be an upset if he doesn't end up at Ohio State. Yeah. Great. Cool deal. Yeah. Um, the, the one I just jotted down is wide receiver Dalen McCutcheon. Yeah. Uh, comes out and says Ohio State is on top. Which um, is great. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. That's great. Um, but probably the biggest news so far is the Fong bomb, probably about at five o'clock. Yeah. Uh, you know, a guy that, you know, you talked about last weekend that if Justin Hills can't miss one, this guy's can't miss two, and that's Bo Jackson. Yeah. Um, and Bo actually came out and said Ohio State leads. He's still got a visit to Bama left next weekend. But uh, we'll start with Bo because yeah. we've talked about him a lot. Um, 
you know, to be able to survive the Georgia visit, to lead after the visit before Alabama, what does that say about Coach Locke? Yeah, man, no, that's big. I mean, that is such a big statement for Coach Locke. Um, and it also kind of highlights, you know, where Coach Alford was when it came to the recruitment of the running backs in the state of Ohio. You know, when Coach Alford was here, the big push was for Marquise Davis. We got to get Marquise Davis. We got to get Marquise Davis, which I didn't I didn't disagree with. I still really don't disagree with. I think he's a very good running back and he's a top player in the country. He's in Ohio. He's in your backyard. Go get him. And Bo Jackson was kind of this afterthought, you know, like he has got it kind of got pushed to the back burner a little bit. But now we get Coach Locke in and you kind of see a shift in the dynamic of the types of running backs that Coach Locke wants to recruit. And Bo Jackson fits that mold to a T. And so for Coach Locke to be able to come in and, you know, Bo Jackson was wanting to take other visits and look at other schools because he didn't feel like Ohio State was making him a priority. And so for Coach Locke to kind of come in and help make up that ground, and now we're sitting in a good spot before his last visits, you know, that's a, it says a lot about the relationship that Coach Locke has built and how much Coach Locke values the commitment of a Bo Jackson. And so, you know, Coach Locke, man, I'm telling you, he is – I we've said it a few times with, you know, Coach Fry and, and, and Coach Laurinaitis and some of the other guys, like, He's got a type and, you know, and Bo Jackson fits that mold, that that downhill bruiser type of a running back. And there's a good possibility if it's possible, if it's possible, they're going to take three guys. And so you almost want three different skill sets out of those three guys. And so he fits that mold of that downhill bruiser type. And so, you know, shout out to Coach Locke for making up that ground. And then hopefully, you know, everything works out. We're sitting in a good spot. So hopefully it finishes up strong for us. Yeah, so speaking of different types, um, unofficial visitor this weekend, um, Anthony Rogers, who's actually committed to Alabama. Yeah. Um, not necessarily that big bruiser type, um, but you actually have some really cool info on him as we were talking before we started recording that uh, it sounds like they're entertaining him being like that slot back like we talked about. <clears throat> yeah, so so um, what's his, Anthony Rogers, right? I just, yeah. I just blanked on it. Okay, yeah, so – this is a guy who's a smaller guy. He's five foot eight, 180, 190 pounds. Um, he is your, if you think back to, you know, if you want to think specific to Buckeyes, you're going to think of Curtis Samuel type of guy who can line up in the backfield and play out at receiver as well. Um, he fits that mold to a T. Um, and he openly said, like, I am more than just a running back. If I, if a, if the team needs me to go into slot and be able to win some routes and some win some one on ones for us or, you know, exploit some different mismatches, he's able to go do that. And so, you know, to get a guy like that in this class who fills that per Percy Harvin, the dreaded Percy Harvin role, um, I think that would be good. And, I, you know, it's still a long way to go. Obviously, he's been committed to Alabama since Saban. And once the new coach came in, he affirmed his commitment, but he's still shopping himself around. And so, do I think he's going to end up in the class? I don't know, but it's a long way to go. But developing that relationship and getting that type of – he's pretty pretty elite when it comes to being able to make people miss. He's got great hands. And so, man, it's just – it's a different skill set that is polar opposite of what Bo Jackson brings. And so that's where you're able to fit in those three running backs by having somebody like this in the class. Yeah, I mean, and obviously it's going to be interesting to see how the running back room shapes as a whole. You know, yeah. for, for the last month, it's been Jordan Davis and Jordan Davis and Jordan Davis. Um, you know, with where Bo stands, it's going to be interesting. You know, is Jordan Davison still in? And then, you know, what does that do with the presumed commitment that was on board of Isaiah West? Yeah. And then, you know, you've got Rogers, who is different from all those guys, which, yeah. you know, it, it's interesting because that that doesn't scream Saban, Alabama to me. Mm -mm. but with their new regime, it makes total sense to have a yeah. kid like that. Yes, it does. Uh, you know, and we've we've talked about running back recruiting a lot, and it's going to be interesting. I don't know. If, I don't think Bo has a commitment date set. No, I don't uh, think so. West is on campus in two weeks, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be interesting because there's been some talk that he's a silent, and we all know 
how much silent recruitments mean. Um, thank yeah. you, Bijan. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting to monitor. Um, you know, it's not the luxury or, or glamorous position, you know, that, that wide receiver is. And we're going to talk about some of the guys that are visiting next weekend when we get into that part. Um, but, you know, this weekend you had DeCorey and Moore. Yep. You had Brunel Brown. You know, obviously we talked about Jamie French a lot last weekend. And I know you had um, some thoughts on wide receiver recruiting as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. You know, again, like – we can't take Coach Hartline for granted. We, we, I think he's built up enough trust that we just need to sit back and let him do his thing. I personally believe getting more out of Texas with Texas money, with Texas Lamborghini dealerships and things like that, it's going to be very difficult. But the fact, but the fact that it is an it is a conversation and it is. He's not pulled the trigger on that. He's from Texas. Like, why would you not pull the trigger on that? You're homegrown. Everybody wants you to stay home. But it's because he believes in the development that Coach Hartline has done over the past however many years he's been at Ohio State. And so Coach Hartline is making that tough decision, is making it a tough decision for, for more. And I think that's great. But if we miss out on him, it's okay. We have guys. We can't overlook who we already have in our class right now. And Desi Jones, I just pulled up a couple of his clips. The dude is a freaking monster in the slot. Um, his routes are so good. Oh my gosh! It is. It, it is. It is. It is crazy how talented he is. And so we can't look past that. You know, you can't look past a Quincy Porter who you said is going to be visiting here in a couple weeks. You can't look past a Dalen McCutcheon that we that you just. You know, we just got on Twitter and saw an update and says we're on the top. Like, these are still very, very, very elite players, top-notch Ohio State caliber players that could come in and do some fantastic, <clears throat> excuse me, some fantastic things. And so, you know, I just, I scroll through Twitter. I see, like, we're making this hard push for more in French, and we're upset that French may, may be trending in another direction or whatever. Listen. We will be fine. We are going to get some elite players, and to to add to <clears throat> to Zone Six, they're going to continue to keep the tradition moving forward. So, relax. Everything will be fine in the wide receiver room. Yeah, I mean, you could be looking at the <clears throat> class potentially of. I do think you land one of more Brown and French. Yeah, um, and I think it's Brown, but you could be looking at a class of Brown. Dalen McCutcheon, Des Jones, and Quincy Porter. Like four good. totally different dudes. Four yeah. guys that, that are very highly ranked. And, and a reminder, you know, none of these guys, and this is not a knock, but it explains Heartline's train of thought. None of these guys are Jeremiah Smith. No. You are not going to play the game with Jamie French or DeCorian Moore and, and let them, you know, fiddle around. You know, oh, Texas is giving me five G's every time I come visit. That that's whatever. But if you want in, you need to be in. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> and you need to be in publicly. Yeah. You know, it's not a silent commit thing. Um. So yeah, aw awesome weekend. It sounds like. Um. And we, you hit on like the actual numbers of it as we were kind of pre gaming that OSU wants to get like ninety five. Yeah, of their official visits in in the month of June. Yeah, because there's there's a dead period in July. If I if I yes, think. there is. Yeah, um, and then you know, it's hard to do these big recruiting visits during season. You just yeah. don't get the oh same time. Yeah, now, you're gonna have a lot of these kids that want to come back, yep. um, especially these borderline kids who are are deciding. Uh, you know, you bring those kids come back. Um, you know, because then at that point, now they get to see school in session. They need to, yeah. you know, they get to see Columbus in the fall. Uh, you know, and, and we had pretty decent weather. So yeah, that always helps. So it, it's going to be interesting to see how that strategy works. Yeah. Um, you know, one other tidbit of a guy we talked about a lot, Berm came out this week on talking stuff. And as of right now, is David Sanders in. That's, a, um, dude, that's, that's so major. And apparently 
the the scuttlebutt is he wants to go to medical school. Wow. Um, I think there's a pretty good the chat. Yeah, I think there's a pretty good medical school in Columbus. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that kind of wraps up the guys that were there this weekend. One one little tidbit, I guess we'll call it. Uh, you know, we talked about Tavian St. Clair last week. And yeah. now this kid, you know, he's gonna be on campus again next weekend. Yeah. Um Devin Sanchez came yeah, from man. Texas, you know, and I believe his parents were with him. Yeah. Um, to Columbus on their own dime this weekend. Yeah. To be there. <clears throat> uh, I, I would assume it's, you know, Decorian Moore related because he's in that yeah. kid's ear every day. But we've talked about culture and the type of kids that, that OSU is going after. Yeah. And that says it. I mean, there, there's nothing else to say when you got a kid in a family coming from Texas. Yeah, man, that that is, you know, we text each other about that this weekend. Like, that is something that is crazy to think about. You know, your own dime. <clears throat> you know your son's going to get a freaking bag when it comes to NIL, when it gets on campus. But the fact that you're willing to, you know, to to, to foot the bill so that your, your kid and us as the parents can go in and help recruit these families – that's the other key part, too. You're not just recruiting the kid, man. You're recruiting the family. And so when we have these type of parents who are out there pounding the table for kids to be Buckeyes because they believe in the brotherhood, they believe in the culture that Coach Day has created, when you have like Paris Johnson's mom and other alumni and their parents avid, like avidly speaking out how much they support Coach Day because – they felt that Coach Day cared about their kid beyond the you know hundred yards and fifty three yards and width beyond the field. They are exactly. cared. They are cared for. And so, when you have people like that who are willing to you know go to bat for the program, it makes mom feel a lot more comfortable. You know what I mean? It makes dad exactly. feel like my son's going to be developed into a man when he gets on the campus. And so like, those are things like you, I, my, my thought process on the culture at Ohio state has always been that coach day always had the best interests of the kid at, at his core. You know, the one part that I always felt like coach day needed to develop is, you know, everybody wanted to see him have a little bit more dog in him. It's mm -hmm. just not, that's just not, that's just not who he is innately. Nope. But he's surrounded himself with people who are dogs. Coach Locke is a dog. Coach Knowles is a dog. Coach Johnson is a dog. Coach Hartline, all these people are have that dog mentality. So now that Coach Day has taken a step back, he can just be him. He can be himself. He can be the dad of the program and make sure everybody feels welcomed and comfortable and all those things. And that goes such a long way with these parents. And so – you know, shout out to the Sanchez family for for making that happen and just trying to get people to be a part of of the brother brotherhood that's being built or that has been built uh, in Columbus, man. So that's that, that was so that's so cool to hear because they are I mean, they are avidly oh, recruiting for the family, for the uh, for the Buckeyes. Put mom on staff. I mean, uh, Pantone needs an assistant. Um, <laughs> one one non player related caveat to the weekend. I believe this would be the first visitors that got to see the new locker room. Yeah. Um, you know, if you haven't seen those videos, check them out. Um, real quick question on that. You know, obviously it's no secret that, you know, you, you have coached Luke and Ryan. Yeah. You know, those guys have been to every major program in the country. Yeah. Do facilities matter? Um, well, Luke and Ryan are different, man. They, they are, they are just, they're football players. They they just want to go and they want to play ball. They want to be developed and they want to enjoy their experience. And so do facilities matter? I think I think they do. But in their case, it wasn't the end all be all. You know what I mean? I know that, you know, there are other facilities out there that are more up to date and nicer, <clears throat> excuse me, than the Woody. I've gone to last year. I went to Notre Dame. I went to two Notre Dame spring practices. Their facilities, their indoor facility, immaculate. Like it is and you like can one see of them, it from the road. 
Yeah, it is one of the nicest things I've ever seen in my life. And I, and I, the first thing that popped in my head was, man, the, the Woody needs some updates. You know what I mean? I've been up to Ann Arbor. I've been up, I've been up there for, for a couple spring practices. Their indoor facility is wow. It's like so beautiful. And so I think in those situations for, for Ryan and Luke, the facilities really didn't matter. But for a lot of people, it does. Like, this is where you're going to be spending your time, like the majority of your time. You want it to feel as welcoming as possible. And so when you see, when you get online and you look up those lockers and there's recliners and there's all these different things that they have available to them, it's because that's where they're going to be spending the most of their time. And as a coach, selfishly, I don't want them to leave the facility because if they leave the facility, I can't control <laughs> what goes on. You know what I mean? But if I know, I know if they're here, just like any parent, if I know my kids are here, they're safe. Right. And so that's why you see these upgrades being made. You know, we were fortunate enough um, a few years ago to go down to Ohio State and they had, this is one of the first times, it's like 2015, it was the year after the national championship. They started making some updates to the Woody then. And we were given a tour, Coach Brady and I, and a few other Harding coaches. And we're just walking around like, oh my God, this is crazy. Well, we go in the locker room, they got a waterfall. And we're like, the heck, it's Ohio. What the heck you got a waterfall for? And one of the support staff guys said, you know why we got this waterfall? Because Alabama had a water waterfall but ours is bigger than Alabama's. So we've got the biggest waterfall. And I'm like, you know what I mean? Like there is that little bit of pettiness that goes on with yeah. it. So that you can one up like the top programs, but you know, the facilities do play a part um, for, for a lot of the kids because, you know, you want to be somewhere where it's, where it's nice. I mean, that's just, that's just natural. You know what I mean? And so that's why they're making those upgrades to the Woody. That's why the new AD is talking about it a ton. That's why Coach Day is talking about it a ton. Like they want to keep up. Yeah, you, know, you got to be able to keep up. Now that Oregon's in the conference, you got to be able to keep up with Oregon because Oregon's f facilities are through the roof. Like they are, they are, they got Phil Knight money. So it's a different type of, you know, organization and and facilities uh, management going on over there. So, you know, I think it plays a part. Uh, but for Luke and Ryan specifically, they were just. They're just meatheads and wanted to go play football, man. So that's where they were going to go wherever they felt their heart wanted them to be at. Yeah, that Notre, that, that Notre Dame facility, this pains me to say. The Notre Dame campus is so beautiful. It's um, crazy. South Bend itself is a trash hole. Yeah. Uh, you get to campus, though, and it's like you are in Rome. I mean, yeah. it, um, you know. What I really like about it is the accessibility. I mean, I literally drove by their football facility. We were in town for a baseball tournament, and they had a big visit weekend. I cannot think of who. There was a guy we were battling them with that visited that weekend. I'm like, I wish I would have knew. I'd have, like, found him. But you know, you're, <laughs> you're driving through, and you literally can see in the football facility, like, I could read their big screen. Oh, my gosh. Like, it said, you know, welcome to Irish weekend yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, it's, it's beautiful. Okay. It's beautiful. Uh, and, and they, you know, that, that Notre Dame's campus is for all football fans. <clears throat> if you're ever able to just go visit a campus, like I would strongly encourage you to go visit Notre Dame because it is, it is a very, 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 it feels like sacred almost yes. when you're, when you're on the campus. And I forget where what it's called, where they have uh, the candles that you light. It's where you go and pray. I forget. What, I, I, I forgot. I'm drawing a blank on what it's called. Um, but anyway, my, my good buddy of mine is a diehard Notre Dame fan. And so when we went to spring practice, you know, one of the things that got brought up, uh, my mother-in-law was battling cancer at the time. And so they were like, hey, man, like when we get there, we've got to go here. We're going to light a candle for her. And we're going to say a prayer for, her. and it was like one of the most powerful things ever. You know what I mean? Like you're in this, you got, you got, you literally have the Jesus. Basilica. Look, yeah. There we go. You literally the basilica have of sacred heart. Yeah. You've literally got Jesus looking at you from the top of the campus and you're lighting this candle and you're saying a prayer. And there's just, so, there was so many people that were there doing the same thing. 
And it was just like one of the more powerful things that I had been a part of in a long time. You could just feel the energy was just different. And so Notre Dame, even though I'm not a Notre Dame fan, Notre Dame will always hold a special place in my heart because of that, because my mother-in-law ended up defeating cancer. Um, and so that was, that was a, that was a pretty cool moment for us to be able to plant that or, or light that candle and, and say a prayer for us. So that was Notre Dame will always hold a special place in, in my heart, but I hope we beat them every time we play them. Yeah. I've got a buddy that's a big Notre Dame fan too. And he said that even on a game day, when you leave after the game, that campus is just as clean as it is at any other time. Yeah. Uh, but with that said, Rudy was offsides. Uh, <laughs> so as we digress, you know, but yeah, we'll give Notre Dame their props. Um, and we'll give, we'll give Ann Arbor community college props for Ann Arbor being a cool town. Yeah. Um, it really is lots different than Columbus, but that's, that's a whole nother discussion. Yeah. Um, you know, wrapping up this weekend, we head into another week of camps, visits. Um, you know, we talked about Nino Hill last weekend. Um, I don't know that this name was on the camp list last week when I looked. Um, a very intriguing kid. Uh, four-star corner from Marion Franklin. Uh, top 10 Ohio kid. Yep. What if there's been a, a Buckeye from Marion Franklin since Verlon Reed? That's a great uh, question. I don't think so. Who ended up at Finley? Yeah, he did. So, he did. I played against uh, him. Dude was a hooper, too. Yeah, he was. Uh, but, you know, unfortunately for Dwayne Galloway, the kid's good. Yeah. But you picked a year that Ohio State has the top two corners in the country committed to, to yeah. graduate. Um, thing that, you know, we always talk about ignore the stars and look at the offers. Yeah. Um, he is a four star. Crystal balls all have him going to Purdue. So that tells yeah. you right there the kid is super intelligent. Yeah. Um, but you know, Kentucky, the team up north, Purdue, Penn State, Syracuse. Yeah. Um, I think that those are all, you know, again, just him playing the wrong position, the wrong graduate year. Yeah. Uh, I agree a hundred percent with that, man. But kudos to him for still going to camp trying to get that offer. Yeah, and I will and I will tell you, like going to those camps and, and seeing those kids that are working for the offers, the Ohio State coaching staff they do a good job of identifying, you know, who they are really trying to evaluate and working with them. Um, and so that's, that's one of the things I really enjoy seeing at those camps is you got those tweener guys who are fighting for that offer. And it's awesome to see them just work, like just work and work and work for that offer and give everything they have and knowing that every rep matters. And so if I'm Dwayne Galloway, you're in, you grew up in Columbus. You're obviously in the backyard. Okay. There are probably is some questions about, you know, the competition um, in the Columbus city league, even though there are some phenomenal football coaches and phenomenal players in the Columbus city league or CPS, whatever it is. Now there, there are so many talented players in that league. Um, so there's probably questions with that. And so if I'm him, I'm going to this camp and I'm leaving with an offer. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to have to, I'm they, they're going to have to tell me this isn't it. Right. And I'm going to make the decision as hard as possible for them. And, you know, as a Columbus kid, I'm, I can only imagine that your goal is to play for Ohio state. You know what I mean? And so I, I'm rooting for him. I think he's a pretty good player. He's rangy. He fits that mold. He's tall. He fits that mold of what we've been recruiting at corner. Um, but I, I do think he might be fighting a little bit of an uphill battle, but I hope he goes out and earns it. Cause I think he's a really good player. Um, one of our, one of, one of the buddies I've met through this whole recruiting thing. And since we started this podcast is a guy named Mick Walker just got hired by Letterman Row. Well, he, last year up until like a month ago worked for Purdue and their 24 seven uh, website. And he raves about Purdue staff and how well they recruit and how well they relate to the kids. And they're, they've been pulling in like these mid four star guys because of the relationships that they've built. So just because he's crystal ball to Purdue doesn't mean that he is not 
you know, an Ohio State caliber player. Like oh, Purdue is getting some good players uh, to commit there. And so, you know, hopefully he goes out to the camp and balls out. And, and if he walks away with an offer, you know, hopefully he jumps on it and gets to live out a dream. Yeah, absolutely. So that will be good to um, to definitely keep an eye on. Um, I'm looking at Purdue staff because I was trying to see if um, I can't think of the guy's name. Left Ohio State to go there, but I don't think he's there anymore um, on the support staff. So it would have made sense. Um, but yeah, so next weekend, I don't know that I would say it's as deep of a visit weekend, but it's just as important. There, there are some big names um, next weekend. Um, unofficially, you got Taven St. Clair again. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think you you pulled some clips up of these next couple of guys. Yeah. Uh, Des Jones, who's committed to Ohio State, will be on yep. campus on his official. Yeah. Um, you know, we've talked about him a lot. This kid is better than people think. He's way better. I'm, I'm trying to present right now. All right, share screen, share, Des Jones, share. Do we got video? We got video. All right, so Des Jones is right here in the slot. You'll see on the very first clip oh, he how, toasts this kid. how explosive this kid is. <laughs> I mean, that is one of the things that you want your slot receivers to be able to do. And, and he's then that in, move with the ball. Yeah, exactly. If you if you can create that separation, does a good job sticking outside and working back to the hash here, allows the quarterback to just throw it out there for him. Like, hey, just get it somewhere out here between the numbers. This is what I love, man. This is where he's working. And so these are the mismatches that you want in these type of guys. You know, these linebackers or these inside heavier safeties, it's going to be tough to guard these guys in the slot. And you can see how he wins and creates as much space as possible. And the league that he plays in in New Jersey is pretty freaking good. Like he's playing some pretty good talent um, in New Jersey. And so, man, like this is just great to see. He can work he's on the crazy. outside as well. Yeah. And he's only going to. He's a violent cutter, all right? So he he breaks violently in his cuts. That's one of the things that Coach Hartline really, really coaches up well. And so his 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 route running ability is only going to get enhanced when he gets on campus. So this is a guy, listeners, who's already in our class, and he is an absolute freaking stud. Dude, this video screams Chris Olave to me. Yep. Yep. I mean that that's a hellacious comparison to put on a kid, but the way, the way he comes out of his breaks, especially on those out routes, it, yeah, it just you know Olave was so good at that, and this kid is, I mean, like that. That's just a a fly. I mean, yeah, and you and you want to be able to you want to see him be able to win over top as well, and so he's able to do that. But you can see if you get up and press him, it's going to be trouble. It's going to it's got potential to not end up well or good for the defense yeah i mean like right there i mean a little bit of cover two it looks like and you know just yeah them. i mean yeah yeah he's a pretty good player man i'm excited about him for sure he's a perfect receiver for the rpo stuff too like we just saw there so um, yeah that's chip kelly's you know bread and butter i mean yeah. that that is gonna be fun to watch yeah uh, you know, so he's from Jersey, another Jersey kid we talked about last weekend, kind of new to the wide receiver discussion at OSU is Quincy Porter. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of scuttlebutt out there that this kid could end up in the class. Um, he's that bigger bodied guy. Um, pretty excited to see, you know, what happens there. Yeah. I got some, I got some clips on him too. Let me. Quincy Porter. What a great name. No doubt. All right. So he's big body guy. Like Jeremy just said, he's going to be the type of guy. Number zero is going to be the type of guy that can go up and get it. As you can see, though, he's out, he's got a little bit of speed to him as well. He's a true outside receiver. Okay. Double team there. Ball's in a decent spot. I'm going to find a way to go get it. 
And so again, you can see, I like the way he sat down in his break there. He's able to make people miss. He's right, got tried some to hit him. Yeah, he tried to hit him with the with the Braxton Miller Hezzy right there. That was fantastic. Being went over top is something that he's going to be able to do. He's got a frame. He's only going to get bigger. Um, if this guy ends up in in our class, you know, he's going to get bigger. He's going to develop. He's a true X receiver, like you saw right there on the backside of a three by one. Quarterback says, you know what? I'm not going to look anywhere else. I'm just going to throw it up to him. And you could see, man, he's able to make play after play after play. And, and so this is another guy, top, man. man. Yeah. It's another guy, you know, like don't listen. We might miss out on somebody, but if you can get somebody like this in the class, again, he's very, very talented. Deceptively okay, really quick. Cool speed. Yeah, man. Yeah. I like his frame. I like his size. I think, you know, it's you can see where he would fit in our offense for sure. You got to have that big bodied red zone guy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like right there. I mean, he just went up and got it. I mean, granted, he's four inches taller than the corner, it looks like, but still. Ooh, yeah. Able to make wow. people miss, get vertical, wow. he's gone. Yeah. So, yeah. so you know, like, like you've pounded the pavement these last couple weeks, th this receiver class nationally, you don't have that have to get guy, especially because you're Ohio State. You know, yeah. when you look at the way your room is is built right now, you know, this is the year that you can, you know, and you're not taking lesser guys. Yeah. You're just taking guys who aren't the sexy names. Yeah. You know, you know like, like everybody knew last year, Jeremiah Smith is the jewel of the class, you know, and, and so from everything we've seen so far, Jeremiah is living up to that. Um. You know, two years ago, it was Brandon Tate and Carnell Ennis are yeah. the guy. Yeah. Um, this year, you don't have, you know, yes, Jamie French, stud. DeCorian Moore, stud. Vernell Brown, stud. But these other guys are not terrible. They're no, not they're bad. not. They're really, <laughs> they're really not, good football man. players. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that shakes out. But, you know, like, you know, the guys that normally listen to us on Spotify and YouTube, or I mean an Apple, if nothing else, go to YouTube and watch this part of the podcast to see these videos. Yeah. Um, you know, these guys are legit. Yeah. Uh, then we switch over to the defensive side of the ball this weekend or this coming weekend. Um, a guy that I feel like is probably going to end up in the class. I feel like it's just the type of recruitment Ohio State always wins. Is yeah. Damian Shanklin, um, yeah. number one player in the state of Indiana. Four star D lineman, you know, OSU, LSU, Alabama, um, all the, the normal culprits. Um, but again, you know, this kid, he, he's good. I mean, you know, we say that and we use that a lot, but, you know, Ohio State is not recruiting projects anymore. No. Um, and in this day and age, you can't. Um, so Shanklin, you know, again, feels just like that type of recruit, you know, the, the Mylon Graham, the Austin Mack, the Terry McLaurin. Um, I just drew a blank on the O-lineman from – Ian Moore. In, yeah. You know, uh, Ohio State wins those. Yeah. Um, so, I haven't watched a lot of Shanklin. Oh, I'm about um, to pull him up because he's a freaking dog. <laughs> he's so good. And, and, and he comes from Warren Central. So, Warren Central, one of the top programs – if not the top program in the state of Indiana, it's in Indianapolis. They pump out talent after talent after talent year after year. And so this is a very, very good program that he's coming from. And this is a guy, man, like he's a real deal. You know, he's got a, he's got potential. He reminds me a little bit of, um, was it job chickens. He reminds me of that yeah. type of player right now. Um, we'll have to get a little bigger, but you can, athleticism plays pretty violent um you know there are some things that obviously he'll have to work on but you'd love to see a defensive lineman work to create collisions in the backfield like he just did and so those are things that you can't coach and you know he's got quick hands he can get to the quarterback and again at warren central he's playing up again I mean, he's playing up against ben davis right now ben davis is another phenomenal football program and this is 
where you want to start getting these guys in the Midwest is from these top notch programs. You know, hit them with the Dwight Freeney spin move right there. You know, he does a lot of good things. If we're able to lock him in, Ooh. obviously size will have to be, you know, improved, but you can see all the traits that he has. And like you said, these are the type of guys that, you know, Larry Johnson has coveted over the past however many years that he's been here. This is a guy that could do very well in Ohio State scheme and provide some versatility. And when he gets, you know, to campus, if he gets, if he decides to come to Ohio State, he's only going to get bigger. He could possibly <clears throat> bump down to a three technique inside as well in pass rush situations. Oh, so, pick. yeah, it gets a pick six. It's an absolute stud. Like I'm, this is a guy that you know. If I had to pick, like I want, I want this kid in our class. You know, he's he's a very good football player, and he comes from a phenomenal football program in Warren Central. He's very good against the run. I mean, like yeah. there was a, a read option play there where his assignment was the back. The back yeah. didn't get the ball, but he took his head off. I mean, yeah. uh, so that that's good to see because a lot of your edge guys, you know, and that's one of the things where I feel like Jack Sawyer has gotten so much better is so against much the better. run. Yep. Uh, you know, JTT's always been solid against the run, but but Jack has really stepped up. Yeah. Uh, one thing so, yeah, you would – one thing you might want to see from him, you know, his pad level can get a little high. He's a taller guy, you know, and it's at the high school level. I know the coaches are probably on him about it a ton about his pad level, but at the same time, it's like he's dominating every freaking play. And so there's only certain things that you can coach. Um, and so um, that's one of the things right there is a great rep of him actually playing with good pad level and getting underneath the shoulder pads of the offensive tackle. And he just, destroyed him back into the quarterback but that's one thing i would probably say he needs to work on but you could see man he's got he's got all the talent in the world another good clip I mean, of him getting up underneath him rush yeah and so this is a kid yeah, man, he's got a think, good little dip move yeah this is a kid i think could be uh a what would be a welcomed addition to the you know recruit 2025 recruiting class um so yeah that one will be interesting uh one that is really developed almost within the last week. I mean, I think he's had the visit scheduled. Um, North Carolina defensive lineman, Trajan Odom. Yeah. Um, he had, he he was crystal ball to USC a week ago. Really? I did not know that. Yeah. Um, and then out of nowhere, you see a bevy of flips to Ohio State. Um, th this kid is your example of look at the offers, look at the film. He's yeah. only a three-star. Yeah, but he has offers from OSU, USC, Alabama. Um, yeah. but I think some of that may be a competition situation yep. because he just transferred to the defending 4A state champions in North Carolina. Yeah, so I'm gonna assume that that was a competition move. Um, you know, to to really see how he stacks. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, and like I said, yeah, the crystal balls started rolling in. Like I want to say last weekend. And it, uh, he's a he's a monster. Uh, he he's six foot four, two hundred and eighty pounds. You know, would like to see him play with a little better pad level. But gosh, as a three technique, you can see that he's got every trait that you would want. Now I can see, you know, you can kind of look at some of the clips of the offensive lineman that he's going against, and I could see why he may transfer. To look for you know better talent to go up against, but. Man, he he's he is a he's a stud. Um, one of the things I love about him, he does not look like he weighs 280 pounds. No, and he um, doesn't move like it either. You know what I mean? So that is your ideal three technique uh, that you would want on the inside. And again, like you just said, the offer list is more important. Don't don't get wrapped up in the stars. You know, this is a guy that you think of uh, Ty Hamilton. Right for us right now. Ty Hamilton has potential to be an all Big Ten player for us this year. And he was a, a lowly rated three star. Um, these are the type of guys that you can go win a bunch of games with. And these are the type of guys that go under the radar a little bit. And that's why these bigger schools try to sneak in and say, I was here first. You know, like I was here to, 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 before you blew up, I was here. So don't forget that. We so, knew you were good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's funny that you use Ty as an example because Ty's brother was the exact same way. Yep, Devon. And, and Davion yeah. just got handled. I mean, Devon just got paid. I mean, paid. Um, but these are the type of dudes you beat the team up north with. Yep. Um, Yep. So, you know, this is going to sound crazy, but this is why I'm the couch potato and you're the coach. So, (laughs) so watching Trajan Odom's video. Yeah. Makes me wish because the vibes I'm getting, and this is wild. Makes me wonder what would have happened if Ohio State would have moved Zach Harrison inside sooner, because that's the vibe I get from watching that kid. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think Zach Harrison was just so it was just so hard to project which way he was going to go. He was just yeah. one of those, I mean, just off absolute freak of nature who was running low 22s in the 200 yep. at 250 pounds. Yep. Like, it's just mind-blowing. He's, he's yeah, running, for sure. He's, he's running 10-8 in the 100, and he's that big. And so you just didn't know which way he was going to go. But by the end of his career, I mean, he was every bit of 280. And he was a mismatch pounds. inside. I mean, yeah. he was. So yeah, yeah, I don't know what gives me the Zach Harrison vibes about watching those clips. I don't know if it's because yeah. he wears number nine Could or, be. or what. But that's just kind of, you know, he, he doesn't wow you with football athleticism, but he's always there. Yeah, you know, Just like Zach Harrison, everybody always hated on Zach Harrison because of sack numbers. Yeah, but Zach Harrison was always to the quarterback. Always to the quarterback. Uh, he 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 found a way to get pressures, to get hurries, to be disruptive. Yes. He his I don't his issue, if you want to call it an issue, was he was not like the natural playmaker that a Chase Young was. Yes. Okay, you know Chase Young is one in a million type of player. You know what I mean? Like, would you have liked to seen Zach? you know, finish some plays at the quarterback in the backfield. Absolutely. But to say that he wasn't disruptive, uh, that's just mind blowing. I believe he was, uh, what was he? Second or third round pick for the Falcons and the the Falcons love him. He's doing some really good things with them. And so Zach has all the elite traits to be really good in the NFL. I still think he was a very good player here. When you have that high of a rating, I mean, it's so tough. People will say the same thing about, JTT when you know if this year he he goes out and only has five and a half sacks well they'll say well did he live up to his five star billing well I mean if you watch him play he was a pretty disruptive player his stats just weren't like the Bosa's or Chase Young and you know what I mean and so that's sometimes these comparisons are I don't want to say they're unfair because that's the business that we're in but you know they can just be like it's hard to live up to some of those things and if you don't live up to it now you're a bad player. That's not true. If you don't live up to the the Chase Young standard, you were still a pretty freaking good player for us, so good that you got drafted in the second round in the NFL. So, you know, like that's one thing that we always have to try to keep our mind on or eyes on as well. Yeah, the, the big fish for the weekend, though, Fahim Delon. Yeah. Um, number one player in Maryland, number two safety in the country, um, OSU, LSU, Oregon battle. Um, from the powerhouse Our Lady of Good Counsel in Maryland. You know, I want you defensive. The secondary as a whole in this class is going to be stupid. Sick, um, but, you know, you add this kid, good God. Yeah, he's special. Uh, there's no other way to put it. <laughs> like, there's no other way to put it. This kid is special. He is elite in every. Um, he's got the speed. He's got the size. You know, this is a punt return for a touchdown here. Um, so he's got some versatility. He can do a lot of different things. When they say 6'2", 190, he is legitimately 6'2", 190. He plays violent. You know, and that's one of the things that you want to see from a safety, that you're willing to play very physical. And you can see right there, it's a very solid tackle. He's up around the box because he is a, just a natural playmaker. And you can see... I love when players show these type of clips on their highlights, like, you know, the the blocked field goals and the punt returns and things like that. Um, he's one of those type of kids that in high school it's hard to coach because he can just do so many natural things. And so you don't want to take away from that innate ability that he has. But you could see he's just making plays. They like to have him up around the box. He's a pretty 
elite blitzer um, for the high school level. That's something that I know Coach Knowles would like to do more of with our safeties. Um, would possibly see, you know, some stuff like this out of uh, Caleb Downs this year. Um, he's more of a strong safety type, so he's going to be more of that bandit type of guy for us, not necessarily the adjuster that's in the middle of the field, but he is uh, he's pretty good, man. He's got it all. He's got it all. You add him to this class, you might have the best secondary in the country. So, nice, nice coverage, even in you know, man in the slot, too. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it it's wild, man. It's gonna be really interesting to shake out. Um, you know, another name we've talked about, not not related, just to kind of close up, you know, lots of positive smoke back on the Dorian Brew front. Something yeah. to to monitor. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that kind of ties up the Buckeye side of life. Um, you know, busy June. June, June is busy. Yep. Um, then we get that little bit of July break, and then August it's go time. Like, you know, yeah, <laughs> the butterflies are already there. Yeah. Um, you know, so to just kind of dabble around the sports world real quick, only a couple things. Um, we hit on it last week. The NBA finals are set. Yeah, uh, Dallas and Boston. Um, who wins and who's your MVP? Oh man, I you know, I hope. I, I'm going to go with Dallas just because of how well Luca and Kyrie are playing. Um, I would love to see the arc of Kyrie culminate in a championship and an MVP. That would be phenomenal. So that's, that's who I'm going to go with the MVP um, if they win it. Shout out to Jason Kidd. I love his coaching style, super laid back. Like you could tell he's just about the players. And you can see it from that team and 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 so in that organization. And so Mark Cuban, all those guys, man, I want to see them pull it out. Um, and so that's 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 gonna be my pick. It's gonna that's a tough one because you know, Celtics are pretty good, but I think uh I think Dallas is gonna pull it out. I too am gonna go with Dallas. And all right, as much all right. as I, I would as much as I would <clears throat> like Kyrie to win the MVP, finals MVP is a lot of glam. Oh yeah, and and uh, if Dallas wins, it's gonna go to Luca. Um, yeah, you know I don't think Dallas wins without Kyrie balling though. Heck so no. that's why it will suck that it won't go to him. But I do yeah. think it will go to to Luca. Yeah. Um. You know the other thing really in the the sports world, you know we we talk about our our newfound well for me newfound you know as a girl dad you've been all about it you know the WNBA. Yeah, you know, there are so many eyeballs on these ladies right now. And, you know, I love it, you know, but there are some shenanigans going on <laughs> in the WNBA. You know, we saw it yesterday. I've made no bones about it that on the floor, I'm not a Caitlin Clark fan. Um, You know, but like she showed some dog yesterday. We always knew she had. And she was barking a little bit. Yeah. But but then what happened after that? She got blindsided. And yeah. Then absolutely. I mean, it would have been a personal foul, 15 yard blindside block in a football game. Yeah. Um and, and you know, you just this is your golden hour if you're the WNBA. And Kaylin Clark has has gotten hit hard a lot in this season. But, you know, they need to use this chance to really, you you know, what we've thought it would do is grow the game. Uh, you know, it, it just, it's heartbreaking to see them have this chance. And, and now it's being almost marred by this controversy, if you want to say, of, you know, and it's not just Caitlin Clark, you know, but... That was the biggest thing yesterday, and then, but then you find Angel Reese <clears throat> for not going to media. But yeah, yet you have Angel Reese's teammate who sat at the podium and said, "I'm not answering any Caitlin Clark questions." Well, essentially, you're not available to the media then either. Yeah, they they just have to get it figured out. Yeah, I think it's I think it's um, I don't I don't I, I gosh I don't want to say this and downplay any of the you know phenomenal superstars in the WNBA. I just think there has not been, you know, this type of popular person enter that world. And I think 
the organizations, the media, everybody is trying to figure out how to navigate this. There are more eyes on us. And so, you know, you have more brash personalities and just be, and now because Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and some of these other players are in the WNBA, well, now we're starting to see the personalities of these women that were already on these teams. And so it's, they're, they're trying to navigate all of this and it's, and it's tough. The one thing I will say, and this is, I will never, like, I love, this is so, this is so bad. This is so bad of me as a parent. But when my daughter is playing soccer, she gets a little chippy and starts talking a little trash to six-year-old Johnny. There is a part of me that's like, that's my girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that is my girl. Don't Don't let them step on you. Don't let them walk all over you. I love seeing that chippiness from these players. I love oh, seeing sure. I love seeing Caitlin Clark not back down from it, and I love to see these vets who have been in the league, like a Diana Tarazi, and like you know some of these other players, would be like, "Look, we've been here balling before you. We're gonna keep balling after you're gone. Yep. So you you're going to get this shoulder check right now." <laughs> and so there's a part of me like I don't want them to get it corrected because it's 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 good it's good for the game it's good for the game think about when lance stevenson was blowing in lebron's ear and untying people's shoes right that's all people were talking about you know what i mean and like think about how fun and the like the conversations that were that were had over those type of things you know and so like i i think it's i think it's good I just feel like there is some things that they are trying to figure out how to navigate and that's going to take some time. Um, but I, I, I love it, man. The product's been, it's been fun to watch. It's been good to see, you know, Caitlin Clark is, you know, realizing that this isn't college anymore. And so she's going up against some elite level defenders. And I think they're also starting to see though, that Caitlin Clark is pretty good. You know what I mean? And Angel Reese and sure. Cameron Brink, they're all pretty good. And so, I, I I like it. I, I like what I'm seeing. I don't like the cheap shots. I'm not a fan of that. But, you know, yeah. let these women have their personalities. If you don't want to go do the media, hey, man, it's like, it reminds me of Allen Iverson, man. We talk about practice. Yeah, I, I love the, the chippiness. Let, let me, you know, make sure I, I, I state that. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't like the cheap shot. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. You know, let, I'm just going to throw this out there. My son's chippiness <laughs> cost him the Bowler of the Year award in his conference his senior year because the other coaches in the conference decided, even though you had like a 15 pin average better than the next kid, you don't deserve Bowler of the Year because yeah. you're an asshole. Like, you know, <laughs> it, it is what it is, you know, but, you know, I don't know if it's a Marion thing or what, but, you know, you got to have a chip on your shoulder. I mean, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, it, it's not that I don't, I, I love the, the swagger, the chippiness, <laughs> yeah. the attitudes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I went to high school with a girl and I actually just told her this yesterday on a Facebook post. She was before her time. Like she was very much, a, I don't want to say like overly aggressive, but she played ball, you know, hard. She, she would let you know when she popped a three in your grill. Yeah. I mean, uh, I watched her get foul out of her last high school game on a technical because she slapped the floor in frustration. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Uh, whole student section almost got tossed for that one. <laughs> um, so, yeah, keep, keep it up, ladies, you know, but let, let's keep the cheap shots down. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, last week we did coach talk. Yeah. Um, this week we're going to do a quick couch potato talk. Yeah. Um, something we've talked about a little bit in the past. <clears throat> Marvin Harrison Jr. versus Fanatics. Yeah. So please, please explain this to me like I am in kindergarten and have no idea what's going on because I truly don't know <laughs> what is going on. So I'm glad so, you are here for this. Discussion. There is not a ton of info out there yet. The lawsuit is very redacted. Um, you know, there's not basically fanatics is saying that in May of 23, 
Marv agreed to the number being thrown out there is a million dollar contract okay. to sign memorabilia. So many helmets, pictures, you know, footballs, and then fanatics. And this will be, you know, I have a guy that, you know, at some point we're going to get him on. It may mean that I have to go remotely and go hang out in Delaware with him at the card shop. Um, but Fanatics is about to own the trading card game. Uh, massive, massive changes coming there. Uh, you know, I'm going to assume that everybody knows, you know, what a football card is. <laughs> uh, you know, that that right there is, is a card manufactured by a company called Panini, um, who is basically losing every license they have to Fanatics. Uh, gotcha. You know, only fitting with show Bo Jackson, you oh, know, since, since it's yeah. Bo Jackson day, possibly. Yeah. Um, but Fanatics is massive in the memorabilia world first. Okay. Um, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, um, Jason Tatum, I think. Yeah. They, they own exclusives with all these guys. So, you know, oh, I want a Tom Brady signed football. The only place I can get a 100% surefire, legitimate Tom Brady signed football for the most part. There, you know, there are a few vendors out there who, who buy bulk from them is Fanatics. So Fanatics is claiming Marv signed a deal in May of 23 and never fulfilled his obligation to them. Now, I don't, right. I'm, I'm assuming that that was a piece count, you know, for this million dollars, we're going to have you sign. 4,000 trading card stickers, you know, a million, not a million, but, you know, 1,500 helmets, whatever, you know, yeah. some type of we're giving you X in exchange for Y. Marvin doesn't have an agent. Marv Sr. handles everything for Marv Jr. Yeah. So about probably about May of 23 or sometime round about, if not sooner, you can go online to a website. It's called the Harrison Collection and buy Marvin Harrison Jr. signed memorabilia. Okay. Well, Fanatics is basically saying, and now this was not an exclusive deal that Marv supposedly signed with Fanatics. And it expired, like we, we kind of hit on, it would have expired once he was drafted which would have opened up the negotiating window for an NFL type deal, the NFL licensing jerseys, yeah. you know, then at that point, you know, Cardinals, mini helmets, whatever. Marv says he never signed a contract that there is a term sheet out there, which would be that X for Y. But gotcha. fanatics is saying that Marvin signed it. Therefore he's breaching. Um, Fanatics is claiming that Marv basically was trying to drive his price up and said, you know, trading card company B. So we'll say um, wild card is, mm -hmm. is a non-licensed um, trading card dealer. So when I say non-licensed, this is a cave on Thibodeau, but notice there's no giants logo on the helmet. Gotcha. Okay. So that's how some of these guys get around things. So like CJ Stroud, for example, was a fanatics exclusive for memorabilia trading cards or licensed trading cards. There are CJ Stroud signed wild cards out there. And then you also had CJ Stroud signed collegiately licensed cards. So, um, Bowman Chrome U, which is a college uniform product, um, licensed. The guys are in their college uniforms. Um, I'm trying to see if I have one sitting here. Um, so, and, and that's the type of stuff. And, and Marv has Bowman Chrome U signed, which Fanatics is going to own top suit. So that's what they want him signing, you know, our stickers and such for that. Uh, okay. But Marv was basically saying these other companies are offering me Z dollars. You know, are you going to match? Well, Marv never showed the numbers to Fanatics and just went and did his own thing. So that's gotcha. where the whole Fanatics claim of breach of contract is coming from. Okay. Um, 
it's going to be very interesting. And it, you know, if a term sheet was signed, you know, Marv, you, you signed it, man. I mean, it, it is what it is at that point. You know, I understand you're all about signing, you know, driving your price up, and I get yeah. that. Um, so the Bowman Chrome U, this is going to be a terrible choice of player. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> so, you know, Michigan guys in Michigan uniforms. You yeah. Know, it actually has the Michigan logo, you know, the wing helmet. And yep. the Ohio State ones, I've got them already stored in a box. But, you know, so it's going to be interesting. And, you know, everybody's making it out like it's hurting the fans. You know, when it comes to the jerseys the fans are wearing on Sundays, let's be honest, 80% of those jerseys are coming from overseas and in eBay and DH Gate. And, yeah. Yeah. You know. Now, you know, as far as the memorabilia side of life, you get on the Harrison collection. It says Arizona Cardinals products coming soon. Um, you know, it's just a case of, you know, Marv is a little bit of a unique guy. Yeah. Um, you know, where he doesn't have a um, an agent or, you know, and honestly, his prices are not – totally out of whack now some people that don't understand the memorabilia world would see these prices and be like huh yeah uh so <laughs> like i've got it pulled up right now and you know the regular silver ohio state helmet 189 bucks okay odds are that helmet on fanatics would probably be 249 or more okay um so it, it's gonna be interesting um, and obviously I keep an eye on it. I'm monitoring, you know, any new developments with it. Um, but you know, I can't tell you if Mars right or wrong until more details come out. Yeah. And that's what, and, and so that's where I was confused about all of these things, because as you are, I'm always on the side of the player, but I also understand how, if you sign an agreement or anything like that, how that's right. a legally binding document. And yep. so, it was one of those situations where like, okay, like, is he wrong or should I be, you know, supporting him in this? And so, you know, that's why I was completely dumbfounded when it came to this. We need to hit yeah, up your guy. Like he's... We need to hit up your guy and see if we can do an episode down there. That'd be that cool. Might, that might be something to talk about. Uh, yeah. I mean, and it's not like Marv isn't signing. You know, like I said, he's got his own stuff. He signed for tops. He signed for wild card. Um, you know, I think he just realizes, you know, because in this draft class outside of the quarterbacks, Marvin Harrison Jr. is the name. Yeah. Um, Ohio State fans, you know, always are willing to spend a little bit extra. Um, excuse me. There, there's a signing event coming up in two weeks at Polaris that, I don't agree with the prices, but there's going to be a crowd. Um, Quinshawn Judkins, uh, Carnell Tate, Will Kazmarek, and Greg Oden. Um, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, like I said, I, I, I've collected long enough. I'm very, very picky. So I think that's why I, I kind of nitpicked the pricing. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll use Kazmarek as an example. They're charging fifty bucks for Will Kazmarek. Really? Um, yeah, not not a knock on Will. No, he's had played down yet. Yeah, I mean, you know, and just like you know, so Carnell Tate, I think Carnell is fifty bucks, um, and Quinshawn is seventy, I think. Okay. Um, you know, but again, I myself have a hard time, you know. With Quinshawn, for example, you know, Quinshawn is has never played a down for Ohio State yet. Yeah. Um, you know, so how how am I supposed to justify that? Yeah, that's tough. Um so yeah, that that'll be something we dive into, you know, as we keep doing these, you know, alternating topics. Yeah. Um, but yeah. That's that's kind of the couch potato talk. Um, 
So that kind of wraps everything up. Uh, yeah, man. Who you got for a shout out this week? Um, hold hold on a second. I got I've got to. I have to actually. You know what? I want to shout out uh, Kurt, our former player of mine at Finley, um, Baylor Wilkin. He just got two. He's got nine total Division One offers, all Ivy League type schools, FCF oh, stuff. Wow. But he just got offered yesterday or two days ago by Bowling Green officially after okay. camping there. And then after he camped there, he got um, an offer from Marshall as well. And so I am extremely excited for him. This is a kid who, you know, came to Finley for a better opportunity, um, had to sit out five games last year because of the transfer rule and you know, because of his hard work and going to these camps and we were like, like we were talking about earlier, he's gone to these camps with the, with the intent of making sure that when he leaves, the coaches know who he is and he's done a really good job of that. So shout out to Baylor, man. Keep killing it. I'm proud of you. I know, uh, I know coach Isla for offensive line coach up at Finley is coaching him up. So keep going, man. It's awesome to see. Heck yeah. Yeah. Well, well, cool deal. Got anything else? No, man, that's it. That's all I got. All right. Well, with that said, we will see you guys next week. See ya.